there, everyone! Welcome to episode number 661 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. Folks, I probably don't need to tell you this, but this AI boom is bottlenecking our infrastructure. (laughs) Traditional proprietary data center networks simply weren't built to handle the massive scale and synchronization demands of modern GPU clusters. And folks, my guest today is tackling this issue head on. Yes, my guest today is Barun Kar, CEO of Upscale AI. Barun and I chat about the issues hindering the adoption of AI, the role that open standards will play in the trajectory of AI innovation, and where he thinks AI infrastructure is headed in the future. Also this week, I check out a new chip that uses light to boost AI performance while also reducing power consumption. So without further ado, please welcome Barun to Fish Fry. Hi, Barun. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, what is Upscale AI all about? So at Upscale, what we are doing is, you know, we are redefining how large-scale AI systems connect and communicate. So what we are building today is open standard-based high-performance networking architecture, which is uh, purpose-built for AI workloads. So uh, we are calling our architecture the Skyhammer architecture, which is designed from uh, grounds up instead of uh, retrofitting legacy systems or legacy cloud-based systems. And we are reimagining what scale truly means in AI networking. So the goal is pretty simple. Make massive AI compute accessible, predictable, and uh, essentially open to everyone. Okay. So what issues do you think are hindering the adoption of AI? I think the biggest issue is, isn't compute power. It's, it's the networking piece. So if you look at, you know, in order to scale, you have lots and lots of GPUs, and today's system can't move data fast enough between the GPUs uh, to keep up with the AI scale and speed. On top of that, you know, you have proprietary closed technologies, which are making things uh, expensive and inflexible, uh, point that only like big tech have access to AI infrastructure. As models become bigger and bigger, power, cooling, cost, all really compound the problem. So without rethinking the infrastructure, AI innovation uh, risk hitting the wall. Sure. Okay. So let's also talk about open standards and AI. How do you see open standards changing the trajectory of AI innovation? Let's talk about open standards. What is, um, you know, essentially open standard? Basically, open standards is about technology and, uh, you know, protocols which are openly available and accessible to to anyone, whereas, you know, a closed standard is not. So in a closed standard, there are two problems then. So basically, technically, you have to use a particular vendor's hardware, software, you know, and you're dependent upon their uh, design cycles. So it's very inflexible. It it basically uh, really stifles creativity, right? Or uh, stifles cooperation. Um, Also, you don't have any pricing leverage. As a result, it's extremely costly. Whereas uh, open system, open standard-based product, uh, essentially what what it does is it creates efficiency, openness. Um, It also encourages collaboration, drives down costs, speeds up innovation. So open interoperable networking uh, will allow AI to scale freely instead of being trapped in these kind of a proprietary limits. Uh, essentially, what it does is democratizes uh, AI, you know, make, uh, helps in making choices. Sure, absolutely. So where do you think AI infrastructure is headed in the future? I think AI infrastructure is moving towards like a unified intelligent system where like compute, uh, memory, networking, all act as one. We'll see more specialized high bandwidth uh, fabrics which are designed specifically for AI rather than retrofitted uh, from legacy systems like cloud networking. 
So what this will promote is efficiency, openness, predictability, and that will be the definition of a uh, next next generation data center. Uh, over time, I would say the AI clusters will operate like a single coherent machine rather than a collection of uh, servers. This will be faster, cheaper, more sustainable AI at, at global scale. Sure. Okay. So what does the future look like for upscale AI? You guys just received a hundred million in seed funding, right? Yeah, we, we did. Uh, so, I mean, I would say that the funding really reflects how urgently investors perceive these AI networking challenges. Uh, that's why I think uh, this urgency uh, is, is helping us. So with the money, we will say we, we are going to use it to scale engineering, accelerate product development. Um, we are going to build like large scale test beds. So we are already starting, uh, started discussing and have partnerships with hyperscalers and GPU vendors who are validating our, our Skyhammer architecture. Um, so our focus will be now to turn the innovation into deployment. You know, So we would want to bring these open AI native networking into production. Uh, essentially, is what our vision is to enable the entire industry, not just a few big tech to, to scale with. We can scale without limits. Sure, absolutely. All right, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, doesn't matter if it's off the other, it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I'm, I'm a foodie. I love flavorful food. You know, I don't have a particular cuisine. Uh, I mean, your name is fish fry. One of the best fish fries I had is there's a small hole in the wall joint in uh, it's a Mexican joint in Saratoga, which is called La Cueva. Oh my God, their halibut, the you know breaded halibut, you know is to die for. The other one is in a, a backyard barbecue has a fish cutlet, which uh, only happens on on uh, Monday, I believe. But in general, I'm 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 a foodie. I I love uh, French. I love Mediterranean cuisine. Uh, I went to Turkey and there was a marketplace where they were selling these um, kebabs and there are like five or six shops selling the same thing, but each of them has their own flavor. It, it mm. was phenomenal. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Really appreciate it. Have you heard about the new chip that uses light to boost AI performance? Okay. So, yes, AI is transforming the globe, driving significant advancements in a whole lot of different areas. However, as we all know, the increasing complexity of AI models does lead to massive energy consumption. But researchers at the University of Florida have developed a promising solution, a new chip that uses light to execute one of the most power-intensive AI tasks. And this innovation could significantly reduce the energy footprint of AI systems. So their research, which was recently published in Advanced Photonics, outlines how this new system can dramatically reduce energy consumption and speed up processing by performing convolutions using laser light and microscopic lenses. And they were able to do this by integrating optical components directly onto a silicon chip. Okay, so this is how it's done. To perform a convolution, the machine learning data is first converted into laser light onto the chip. The light then passes through Fresnel lenses, which carry out the mathematical transformation. The result is then converted back to a digital signal to complete the AI task. And this is actually the first time that anyone has put this type of optical computation on a chip and then applied it to an AI neural network. And the results from the tests with this system are very promising. The prototype chip classified handwritten digits with about 98% accuracy, comparable to traditional ICs. The system also uses two sets of miniature Fresnel lenses, 
fabricated using standard semiconductor manufacturing techniques. Now, these lenses are narrower than a human hair and are etched directly onto the chip. This team also demonstrated that this chip could process multiple streams at the same time by using lasers of different colors, a technique known as wavelength multiplexing. This research team from the University of Florida does point out that chip manufacturers like NVIDIA are using optical elements in some parts of their AI systems today, which could make it easier to integrate this new technology. The study leader of this project explains the impact of their research like this. Performing a key machine learning computation at near zero energy is a leap forward for future AI systems. This is critical to keep scaling up AI capabilities in the years to come. In the near future, chip-based optics will become a key part of every AI chip we use daily, and optical AI computing is next and I am here for it. So if you would like even more information about Upscale AI or this super cool new research from the University of Florida, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, I completely understand. <laughs> you can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have that YouTube channel I just mentioned, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of December 5th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.